Peace, family. Welcome to another uh, episode of Muhammad Mas number 46 TV, which we have here on YouTube. Uh, today we have a very powerful topic we want to talk about, but before we get into the topic, which I'll let you know, we want to talk about whether or not uh, Le LeBron James' uh, reposting of lyrics by 21 Savage, were, were they anti-Semitic, right? So, but before we get into that, we would like you all to become, you know, frequent uh, viewers of our videos. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the notification button, and make sure you share this, our page with other people so that they can uh, have access to the information that you are having access to. So as I talked about, we're talking about this recent controversy. So if you didn't know, LeBron James on Instagram, which he often does, he shows himself rapping uh, lyrics. He shows himself, sometimes he might post, repost the lyrics from a rapper. And in this case, he reposted the lyrics from the young brother, 21 Savage. And the lyrics that he actually posted, it comes from 21 Savage Savage's new uh, album. I am, some, I can't think of the name of it, but it's his new album. Listen to what LeBron James reposted. He says, we've been getting that Jewish money, everything is kosher, right? talking about Jewish people's dominance in the financial markets, which is undeniable. We can't deny that. And it's a fact. And that is not a bad fact. That's not a bad thing. Kudos to them. Applause for them for being able to do such. And you know, when it talks about kosher, kosher just means that everything is clean. So that's what 21 Savage is talking about. So when I heard that there was, there's been a backlash and people were saying that it's anti-Semitism. There are articles being talked about LeBron James and anti-Semitism is the new form of anti-Semitism by black liberals, et cetera, et cetera. But LeBron James made a statement and he said this in following this, he said, apologies for sure if I offended anyone. That's not why I chose to share that lyric. I always post lyrics. You hear what he said? He always posts lyrics. That's what I do. I ride in my car. I listen to great music. And that was the byproduct of it. So I actually thought it was a compliment. And obviously it wasn't through the lens of a lot of people. My apologies. I definitely was not. It definitely was not the intent, obviously, to hurt anyone. So that's what LeBron James had said. And then they actually talked to 21 Savage. And 21 Savage also apologized. And 21 Savage has talked about how many of his, his people, he says this, this is what 21 Savage said. The Jewish people I know are very wise with their money. So that's why I said we be getting Jewish money. I never thought that it would offend anyone else, right? That's what he tweeted on uh, shortly after this. And he said, "If I'm sorry if I offended everybody never mentioned in my my intention i love all people that wasn't his intention and so the question we want to ask is was it anti-semitic to acknowledge what even jewish people and even non-jewish people talk about about the great success that the members of the jewish community have as it relates to finance and many other fields no it was not anti-semitic right but to me, there's a bigger issue. And I'm, while I say, no, it's not anti-Semitic, I want all of you all to go and get this book. And you can actually get it online for free in the PDF file. It's written by Steven Silberger, who is Jewish. It's titled, The Jewish Phenomenon, Seven Keys to the Enduring Wealth of a People. And he's basically talking about how Jewish people have been able to achieve the success that they have. And he wrote the book so that other communities could do the same. And I commend him for uh, writing this book. And I think it's a great book. And listen to what it says on the back. Jews make up only 2% of the total population, yet 45% of the top 40 of the Forbes 400 richest Americans are Jewish. One third of all American multimillionaires are Jewish. The percentage of Jewish households with Income greater than 50,000 is double that of non-Jews. On the other hand, the percentage of Jewish households with income less than $20,000 is half of that of non-Jews. 20% of professors at leading universities are Jewish. 40% of partners in leading New York and Washington DC law firms are Jewish. And 25% of all American Nobel Peace Prize winners are Jewish. This comes from 
not from the album Minister Louis Farrakhan, but this is one of the many sources by someone who's of the Jewish ethnicity, the Jewish faith, right? That talks about their great accomplishments. So as the rapper said, and as LeBron James said, they thought it, it really was a compliment. And it really was meant to be a compliment. Now, one of the things, this is the, 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 the uh, greater issue that is not being discussed. And Jay-Z, in an interview, he pointed it out. Now, here they became upset about them, this compliment made by this rapper. But what about all of the other stuff that's mentioned in this song by 21 Savage? And the name of the song is ASM Asmir, ASMR, that's the lyrics. So if you would be upset about this compliment that he is making, how come they didn't get upset about the other things that he said were that were destructive and detrimental to the black community. For example, the song starts off after the, the intro, the first verse, he says, roll the window down, stick the Glock out, stick the Glock out. This chopper got, a, got an amp, an AMP, I'm a rock out. When it's time for smoke, they gonna cop out. This AK-47 made in Moscow. All these dead bodies got me seeing strange things. Both sides of the gun, I done dealt with and felt the pain. He talks about using the, the word nigga several times. I got, I got a lot of stripes, all my niggas, S-H-I-T. You can roll a dice. He talks about getting a Glock. Now, who owns the record label that 21 Savage is signed to? And if him making that statement was offensive to them, how come all of these other statements are not offensive? And they tried to do the same thing with Jay-Z his, his, on his 444 album. When they were talking about, when he said how Jewish people have accumulated wealth, he said through credit. But Jay-Z didn't back down from it because he said it was a compliment. And he, he made a very, very uh, significant point about that. Well, he said this. He said, if, if you are upset about me saying that Jewish people have established strong credit and that has helped contribute to their financial success, he said, if that bothered you and it, all of the stereotypes that were shown in the videos to the images of this video and the other things I said about black people, if that didn't bother you, he said, then that's a greater problem. And that's what I want to talk about today. How did you react when, when, when the, in the, that one line in that song where you refer to, to Jews and wealth? Some people got upset. Yeah. How did you feel about that? I felt it was really hypocritical. Only because, I mean, it's obvious the song is like, you want to be rich, do what people who got rich done. Of course, it's a general statement, right? It's, it's obviously a general statement. Like the video attached to it was a general statement. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have a problem with the general statement I made about black people and people eating watermelon and things like that, if that was fine and that line about wealth bothered you, then that's very hypocritical mm -hmm. and, you know... That's something within yourself. Because right. basically I was saying, you know, Michael Jordan, LeBron James is a great basketball player. He trains in the offseason. If you want to be great, train in the offseason like him. That's basically the statement. Right. And you can't miss the context of the song. Right. Yeah. Therein is the greater problem. Here is a known fact. And I'll say this. Here, this is what Meek Mill said. And salute to Meek Mill. Meek Mill said in response to this controversy, Jews have owned everything in our culture from record labels, our favorite teams, our neighborhoods, and our clothing, right? He said, it has always been a compliment to say we was getting money like them, knowing the history of them, overcoming hatred. I can't wait until a day when I hear a different race saying we, saying we getting black folks money coming from being slaves in America. That would be amazing. And that's the sentiment. If several years ago, uh, Buster Rhymes made the song Getting A Rap Money, right? And they're just talking about how they admire the financial skills of this segment of people. And as a black community, we need it. But here's the issue as going back to this how come all of the other stuff that 21 Savage has said, how come that's not an issue? When these record labels, no, they encourage these young brothers with this madness. Talk about dope dealing. You helped set the climate. NWA, who owned Interscope? Who was with who was the, the you had who was with NWA in their beginning? Jerry Heller. 
promoting this negativity where they make money off of us, right? And now you want to be hypocritical that when this person gives a compliment, you're going to try to say it's anti-Semitic. And this is where the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan uh, actually showed. And I'm going to show you this clip where Minister Farrakhan is talking about what they did to our brother Michael Jackson, where they tried to make him into being anti-Semitic. Comes from our pain. So pain is the mother of creativity. Michael Jackson, when I finished, he took his pain and he wrote the album History. Right. And in it he said, they don't really care about us. And then he said, Jew me, do me, like me, kike me. Those are slang words that are used like nigger and spick and all of that, or wop. The Jews called him in right away. And they took every one of those records off the shelf. He had to redo it and take Jew me, do me, like me, kike me, take that out. But we can call our women bitches wow. and whores. Wow. And I'm going to put a cap in your, you know what, MF. We can do that and they sponsor it. But if we say one word that puts them in the center of the controversy, they use their power. And when he was dealing with a song that was dealing with all of the isms. But what we, to the members of the Jewish community, this is what we, have, we take issue with. You can't make a living off of our people in the self-destructive tendencies and the self-hatred that comes from the movies that our people write, comes from the music that our people engage in. And you don't use your knowledge, you don't use your skill to educate them and correct them and say that that's not beneficial for your community. I was watching an interview with Liar Corn on Breakfast Club. When they asked him about that, he basically said in the end, that listen, I gotta make a me, I gotta provide for my family. So basically he was saying that look, I see they, yes, these things are self-destructive, but I gotta make a way for provide for my family. So as I get ready to close, I wanna go back to this book, The Jewish Phenomenon. Now what's interesting in this book, it gives seven keys to enduring wealth of a people. He talks about seven principles that the Jewish community has used to help them attain where they are right now. And what I found interesting in this book is that every one of the keys that they mentioned that a people can use to improve their condition, we can, we can prove historically that members of the Jewish community have opposed our efforts to implement those seven keys. And we can do so from these two books. Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Now, don't get all bent up out of shape and remember what the media has been saying. These books are anti-Semitic. There are letters where the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan wrote to members of the Jewish community, Jewish leadership. And in the letters, he said how he told the research team not to quote from anyone who's labeled as, quote unquote, anti-Semitic. So all of this information, brothers and sisters, in these books are not from Nation of Islam scholars. These are quotes and information taken from Jewish rabbis, Jewish historians, Jewish politicians, right? They're scholars. So the minister said, if these books are anti-Semitic, denounce the scholarship that we quoted from your people, and we'll get rid of these books, and they have yet to do so at all. But these books show how they have members of the Jewish community, not all members of the Jewish community, because they are members of the Jewish community who are sincerely trying to do the right thing. But like as in Islam, like as in Christianity and other forms and different things, there are some people who have hijacked the, the sincere practice of Judaism. And this is who the Alpha Minister Louis Farrakhan, when he quotes from the Bible, he says that synagogue of Satan, which is made of more than just members of the Jewish community. The minister has a clip, talks about it's white, it's black. It's a group of people who use their knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to control the actual masses so listen don't get caught up in this in this bandwagon saying that what lebron james said was anti-semitic lebron what he 
reposted, rather. Everything that LeBron James said, they have already said it about themselves, and it is a known fact, right? So get this book, but also get these books to show how the same principles that they have used to better themselves, they've denied us and our opportunity to better ourselves. So remember to hit the subscribe button, remember to hit the notification button, and I hope that you enjoyed what we talked about today. Thank you.